Welcome to DES Trucks. In this video, we are going to be talking about how to wire strobe lights to your truck. And we are going to be wiring lights to our 2019 F 250. Now, we are going to talk about how to fuse your lights, how to um, wire the lights. And in this particular truck, there are no factory upfitter switches. So, we are going to have to add our own switch to the truck. So there's going to be a lot of things covered in this video and a lot of it's going to be universal that will work for any vehicle. Some of it's going to be Ford Super Duty specific and uh, a lot of it's going to be very, very uh, interesting. It's going to have a lot of parts here that you can order from Amazon. Most of the stuff that we have, we ordered from Amazon. So a quick look at some of the tools that we're going to be using here. Sorry about the mess. I've been so busy that I haven't had time to clean up the table. So let's take a quick look here at some of the some of the items we're going to be using and some of the stuff we're going to be installing. So number one, we have our switch. This was ordered from Amazon. I know I'm going to say it wrong. It is called Apelli. I think it's made in China, but it's one of the few lights that actually reviews well. One of the few switches, I'm sorry, that actually reviews reviews well um, online. And, you know, most of the other switches, they're like, they don't work when they come in the package. But this one is a, it lights up, you press it, it holds down, you press it again, it pops back up. Very well reviewed, very well reviewed light. We also have a fuse box that we may install under the hood of our truck. Because like I said, this does not have factory upfitter switches. So we might install that. It's not necessary. But there, there does need to be a fuse. If we don't install that fuse box, what I have in here is just a couple little extra fuse holder things where you can add a fuse. You can also just install this if there's no room. I'm not sure which way out, route we'll go yet, but I have a couple of these and they just pretty much hold the fuses like that. And they have these are nice because they have little caps. Now, these truly these truly will be waterproof because they have little waterproof caps. So I might use these. I might just use this on my mower, though, because I also will be installing one of these switches on my lawnmower on my other channel, though. That's going to be that's going to be over on Lawn Rush where we put this switch on a mower and we're going to put strobes and take down lights on our lawnmower, which is over here. But that's for another channel. That's for Lawn Rush. But anyway, real quick before we go too far. Um, First of all, again, back to what we're installing. We got, we do have a wire stripper. This automatically strips the wires for you perfectly every time. We have some LED strobe lights. Uh, these blink and have, and have and have steady burn. The switch comes with a pigtail to install. Over here in our little electrical tool section. So again, sorry for the mess. We have red and black wire. What we'll do. Is we'll split this apart and use the red for our hot and our black for our ground and uh, this is a automotive grade wiring this is probably what you want to use for automotive wiring it has a really waxy kind of finish to it it's almost marine grade not quite rated for marine but when, a lot of times you get automotive grade it's pretty close to a, to a marine grade just doesn't have that marine rating uh, some of the other items that we have is in our little box here we have our shrink tubing we have our fuses we have uh side taps that you can tap wiring this is a controversial one I haven't actually used these yet but we have more butt connectors these ones have solder on them uh we have ends eyelets that we can add eyelets to our frame or any grounding points that need to be added we have metal connections so, you know, when you're doing 12 volt wiring at home with your own stuff, it does tend to require you to order a bunch of stuff in order to do a good job. So keep that in mind. You know, it's going to be a couple hundred bucks worth of stuff in order to get super squared away so you can do this kind of work. But anyway, let's go ahead and pop the hood, get up under here and talk about what we're going to be doing, the approach we take and how we're going to do things. See you under the hood. All right, guys, here under the hood of the 19 F250, uh, our game plan, we're going to tap into this battery here. We're going to pretty much put the positive lead here, probably just on top of this and run our red wire over 
to this area here where we are going to make use of the pass through wires. If this truck has that, I believe pass through wires are going to be standard on all Super Duty trucks where there's pretty much wires over here that pass through into the cab of the truck. Once we pass through the cab of the truck, we are going to come over here and underneath this panel, I believe the pass through wires pop into the cab and that prevents me from having to drill through the firewall to get inside of the cab. Once we get up under here, we're gonna flow through this way and come out through here. And with our hot wire, we are going to go and put our switch right here on this part here. And I think this is a good spot. This is an XL truck, so it does not have push button start. So we are going to put our switches either here, right here where the push button start would normally be, or we're gonna put them right here so you could put two here two on the other side whatever i don't know exactly where the room's going to be they could be down here they could be anywhere you want but uh depending on where there's room and we're going to pull this panel down uh so basically uh let's go ahead and kind of get everything staged for the next step see you guys at the next step all right guys so this panel is super easy to remove you actually just pull back on it and it comes off um, it's good to have the truck warmed up so you don't break nothing. It's kind of cold out today, so having some heat in the truck helps. There's some little plastic clips involved, and you don't want to break them because they can be hard to replace. But it's kind of a straight back, but it kind of folds down too. So up on the top, it's a straight back kind of thing. And you just gingerly work it. And if you want, you can start the vehicle and warm it. My truck's already warm. <laughs> But if it's real cold, it can break things. So boom, it drops down. But like I was saying, these spots here, now that this panel is down, you can kind of see that these spots here, there's pins here. Now I won't be able to remove it fully, so I have to eyeball things and just drill it and hold it. But I don't want to drill through this clip. So I can put one here. Uh, I can put one here, one here, or I can put one two one here one here so i may just put them maybe on the right hand maybe i'll put them right hand operation one two it does require a 19 millimeter hole and we could actually go ahead and drill those holes right now let's uh let's go ahead and grab the drill there we go we've got a hole we're making holes guys but anyway take our switch screw off the screw put it in see how it looks does it fit good? Does it cover the hole good? A little lock ring. So this this little um, button here, I'll put a link in the description and everything. But this is uh, this is a IP65 rated um, button, and it's one of the few good ones out there that reviewed well. We'll see how it plays out long term. But that's pretty much how this is going to look, and it's also going to light up for us once we. It's also going to light up for us once we uh, power it and everything. So it will stay lit all the time. And yeah, this is just a nice little spot for it. Now, if I do do a second one, I will have to be very particular and put it on sh straight and everything. And it's going to be a testament of how good my eyeball is. But we'll just do the one for now. You know, maybe I'll put the other one on the other side just because, you know, making another hole means that you potentially could put it a little crooked but that's how it's gonna look does it look factory oem kind of sorta that's why i went with black they also make these in stainless steel but i just went ahead and got a black one just because i didn't know guys i didn't know how it would turn out so thinking about this switch and how we're going to wire this and how we're going to do this one thing to consider is the amount of load that we're going to put on this switch so this is a 12 volt 12 or 24 volt switch and it only has so much rating and so much that it can carry so for carrying LED lighting, I believe this is rated for like 5 amps or 10 amps. I have to double check that. But being that it's only rated for so much amperage, we cannot run big items on this. LED lightings are, are is fine because they're just strobes and they carry like 3 to 5 amp ratings. But if you're going to run like an air compressor or something like that, then you also need to incorporate a relay so that would just that little switch will just fire the relay you need to incorporate a relay that can carry a load but in our situation we're just powering leds so we're going to fuse the system 
so that this switch is totally protected so that the fuse will blow before our little switch will blow and that's how we'll kind of do it unless our lights require a lighter um, fusing situation but that's kind of how we're going to play it so anyway see you guys at the next step all right guys so next step is going to be to remove this kick panel to see if we can access these pass-through wires we'll go ahead and get rid of this this trash and uh we'll pull this up get to get rid of the mat and then grass. It's, guys this is a work truck it's a little dirty full of grass ah, dirty get rid of our floor mat our husky floor mats which i think are the best and then we'll pull this up this guy here is the first to come up and expose how dirty this truck is so this comes off it's a little bit hard to do with one hand but uh this comes off set this aside and then we have to remove this panel in order to remove this panel pull our weather stripping up a little bit uh man pull that off exposing that edge and then pull this up here I actually install these on the F-150s in the Ford plant in Dearborn. So there's a little door here that we can take off. There you can see our pass-through wires that we are going to take advantage of. And they're all butt-ended. Butt and uh, yeah. I will say I didn't realize they were that light gauge. Our... Wiring's quite a bit heavier gauge than that, but it is what it is, I guess. We're just doing LEDs, so we'd have to fuse for that gauge anyway, which I think our switch is pretty good. This is hard to do with one hand. Come here. Someone already cracked that. That was already cracked when I got here. Um, does this move? Does this help? So the glove box is a little, in a way a little bit. But anyway, I'm going to set the camera down and get this off with two hands. All right, so that took two hands, but now that that is off, put it with the rest of them. And yeah, look how dirty this gets. Nasty, guys. You can see the water and freaking, whoa, we've got maybe some even, even some water intrusion getting into the truck here. And it's just draining out. Bottom of this carpet's wet, so we might even have a water leak. Anyway, that's not what we're here for today. So when you, all right, so way back here, I found the pass-through wires and they are wrapped up down in there. They're tied up. If you look right there, you can see they're tied up. I'm going to try to free these wires with the blade with a little pocket knife. Working with one hand. All right, guys, so we found our pass-through wires. Let's go ahead and see if we can uh, figure out how they pass into the cab. All right, so here are the pass-through wires. They are actually right here. Let's get some light up there. They are actually right here coming through, and they look exactly how they look under the hood. So instead of me drilling through the firewall and all that, I can just tap right to my battery, go to the pass-through wire, then tap back into the pass-through wire and go through here with just the hot wire and then go around underneath to the metal frame that's under there and do everything like that but anyway see you guys at the next scene all right guys so what i ultimately decided to do decided to do for the fuse panel is just simply mount it here using some aluminum stock that i had laying around so this could be done with steel aluminum aluminum's easy for me because it's easy to drill but it's super heavy duty definitely doesn't need to be this heavy duty we're going to put two bolts down here to hold it to this fan shroud and this is just some uh reinforcement plastic here there's nothing behind it um let's see if i can get in here better and show you but there's nothing there just two screws going through the fan shroud there some heavy duty aluminum stock and our fuse panel is just going to secure itself right there and then the positive lead will tie into the battery here on the positive giving us a real short run and i can actually flip this around so that our positive lead can go straight to our battery giving us minimum unfused distance 
Uh, that is how I prefer to do things. I don't want to put this all the way over there and then the whole runs unfused. So just this area from here to there is going to be unfused. There's no potential short, short to ground anywhere between here and there. And then from here, we're going to jump over and come around and hit our negative battery terminal. So, but we could hit for our grounding, we could hit either that negative or we could hit any other ground strap. We could actually come across here and tie into this pre-existing ground strap that's already here that's got our plow hooked up our plow is actually grounded right there as well instead of tapping into our battery because there's nowhere really to tap into our battery so maybe that's what we'll do but anyway we are going to continue this process see you guys at the next scene all right so we are making progress i have the metal bracket mounted here to the fan shroud it's very solid doesn't wiggle wobble or nothing like that we have the uh negative ground which is actually excessive you don't actually need to ground this because if you're only running the positive side and you're grounding locally but we are going to nonetheless run our ground for our ground we're just going to double up two wires we're going to cover it and and convolute we already shrink wrapped this end or shrink tube that came out all as one crushed and shrink tube that's crushed and grabbing crushed and grabbing onto the copper and looking over here this side is already tied into the ground that's how it looks finished product but after we go ahead and do that we just take our shrink tube and put it on there we're going to trim that and we're going to put a little piece of black shrink over the end of that so it's all going to come together let's go ahead and put some heat to this i'm going to mount the camera so we can see how that looks all right, here we go. So I'm going to put this shrink tube on here after all is said and done. And I'm going to just trim this piece so that it looks nice. So this piece you can just trim here with a razor. Kind of hard here to do, but cut that like that. Get rid of the excess. And we're going to go ahead and put this on there. Have it looking like that. And then to really make everything look nice, we are going to put this shrink tubing on. And I'm going to cover up that yellow stuff. You know, cover that up. I think it'll look better with that covered up a little bit, just like so. And this keeps everything tight and tidy. Um, this up. We have heat, I believe. Sometimes it doesn't want to light. There it goes. All right, it's lit. Our heat here, I like to have the heat on the bottom like this. I'm gonna turn the camera just a little bit up, upward so we can see better. So I like to have the heat a little bit toward the, or more toward the bottom and moving it, rotating it. This is a big shrink. This is a big shrink because uh, I'm actually shrinking a real big piece of tube down real small, so I'm gonna keep my heat moving around real good. Um, I'm gonna do it from here. And I gotta watch the plastic because it's easy to melt that. It's easy to melt the plastic. Yeah, I will burn. I don't wanna burn it too bad. I gotta keep it moving. All right. So like I was saying, the plastic will melt. Got to keep an eye on that. I like to work the centers, get the air bubbles out. Get it. Oh, there goes the plastic a little bit. Ah, I didn't do that. Right. Got to keep it moving. Keep it moving. Didn't mean to melt the plastic. The plastic melts easy. Didn't realize it was going to melt that easy. But yeah, that's uh, that should be pretty good. Like it's not doing anything; it's just making it look, making it look a little nicer. Um, did get the plastic a little there, but it'll be all right. Now that that is done, we can turn our camera, and this will ground it. So if I ever down the road wire something up under the hood here. And I need a good ground, I can ground it 
to this. This, I don't think the fuse actually carries. The fuse isn't going to actually carry nothing. This whole end of eyelets on the negative side is just connected to the ground. So if time was an issue, then you could skip the grounding because you wouldn't need to ground it. If unless you're wiring directly, so we're going to put a washer, lock washer, nut. Unless you were wiring directly, then you would need a ground. But you can also, I mean, I'm just going to ground my stuff right to the frame. But yeah, nonetheless, that is how the ground's going to look. There's your ground wire. It's going to look like this. It's going to run, run along the battery and tie in right there. But anyway, that's pretty much it. See you guys at the next scene. All right, so I've made this connection here with the positive wire just going across, hitting the positive side of the new fuse box. And then over here, we have made our connection to our pass-through wire. We're gonna go with the gray-orange pass-through wire. And we've used a buck connector right there. And we're gonna slide this shrink tube down and shrink wrap that right over. And then the red's gonna run its way around and eventually connect with an eyelet to our positive fuse box where it will be fused. Anyway, I'm gonna keep working and I'll update you guys soon. All right guys, so we tied to our pass-through wire. We followed that all the way down through here and we made our connections to our switch. We have our ground, which powers our LED light for our switch, which is lit at all times. And our power, which also powers our LED light. Then the blue wire comes out and it powers our whatever we want to power which in our case is going to be a flasher so with this this wire is cut short because this this yellow wire will actually provide power when the power is turned off so I got to cap that one with some shrink tubing but if we just put this up here like this we can get an idea of how this is all going to look when it's all said and done there's just going to be a button right there and when I press the button we are going to get power sent to our lights now obviously this is just here for demonstration purposes and we are going to mount these lights all over but wherever we decide to mount the lights they'll have to tie in to this point but anyway guys this is DS trucks comment below and tell me what you guys think about this install with our new fuse box added underneath the engine bay let me know what you guys think about that. This is how it turned out. It's pretty much just right there. Uh, it's got a cover, you can add fuses, and that way anything that you add to the truck can be fused. Uh, moving, moving forward down the road, it's marine grade and none of that stuff should corrode, none of that stuff should corrode. But I decided to actually go backwards and use a black wire and not a red wire because the red just stood out and looked kind of funky under the hood. So uh, I just ended up using a black wire, and again tied it into the uh, tied it into the uh, pass-through wires here, which you cannot see those pass-through wires. So it turned out real cool. I could actually um, take the switch and go back to the pass-through wires to get the power on signal to be out inside the outside of the cab. So anyway, guys, this is DS Trucks. If you like this kind of content, subscribe. And uh, my name's Sean. Hope to see you guys in the next video. We'll probably be working on this truck again soon. But see you guys next time. Over and out.